to one place and one group of men um, that we are unashamedly Christ-centered. We try to impact, improve men's lives through prayer and spiritual enhancement, personal development uh, is what we've been called to do. Uh, so we just want to ask you to just tune in, uh, to open your mind and open your heart to receive uh, a dynamic word as we go into prayer uh, on this morning. Uh, the one thing I have before the prayer, I have a scripture that says, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 18, says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, for us, for every man under the sound of my voice. Uh, it's just put into my spirit this morning that there may be a man that, or a woman that does not have a relationship with God. And we want to tell you that uh, God is waiting for you. You're not waiting on God. God is waiting for you. So we're going to pray over you. And in order to experience change, you have to accept God into your life first. That's how uh, we become change champions. That's how you accept change. That's how you experience growth by entering into a relationship with God. So we're going to go into prayer. Most heavenly and gracious Father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, we know that you are Lord of Lord, King of King, the great I am. Father, we come as humble as we know how. First, to just tell you thank you for allowing us to experience this day, for allowing us to experience brand new grace and brand new mercy. Father, thank you for not doing to us or giving to us what we deserve, but thank you for your grace and your mercy because we all have come short or fallen short of the glory of God. Father, we were made in your image and your likeness, but there's only one perfect one. There's only one perfect one. But Father, because we enter into a relationship with you, that anointing and that power has been transferred into us by way of the Holy Spirit. So Father, we thank you for increase. We thank you for favor. We thank you for peace. We just thank you for this day, Father, where we were able to experience the rising of the sun, where we were rosen by your touch, by your finger of love. Love, I pray that every man on this call, under the sound of my voice, experience change, experience increase, experience growth. Father, because we know that there's power in your name. We know that there's healing in your name. During this time, Father, we talk about circumstances. Father, the, pan the pandemic is running rapid. Pastor Bowen just said they shut London back down for four weeks. Father, they're going to shut some more states down. But we know, Father, that the kingdom never closes. So we thank you, Father, because we know that you have the outcome in your hand. Father, we are able to survive this pandemic because we walk by faith and not by sight. And your word says faith without works is dead. So this is our work this morning, Father. We come in prayer, Father. We seek, we're seeking you, Father. We're seeking your word. We're seeking your will. We're seeking your way. You're going to get us through, Father. You're going to get us over, Father. Your word, Father, moves mountains. We thank you this morning, Father. I'm not going to tell you about my mountain. I'm going to tell my mountain about my God. Thank you. Father, touch the government. Father, it's in disarray right about now, Father. But we know that you hold the outcome. Touch the minds, Father. Touch the decision-making of those in charge and power, Father. 
because they are in, in charge and power from an earthly standpoint. But we speak to a high authority. We speak to you because we know that you're in charge from a heavenly standpoint. So our, our rest, Father God, our peace lies in you. Father, touch every man and family on this prayer call. Father, experience change in their relationship, in their, in their businesses, Father, in their marriages, Father. Change only comes, Father, as long as we continue to put you first. Nothing comes before you, Father. Not our wives, not our jobs, not our businesses, Father. So we thank you. Father, we ask you to look in on the sick and shut hand. Father, we pray for Brother Lafayette Banks and the loss of his mother. Father, give them peace, Father. Jehovah Shalom. <laughs> Speak to him, Father. Speak to the family, Father. Because now we know they're dealing with burdens, Father. We know they're grieving, Father. But allow them to look to the hill from which cometh their help. Because all of their help comes from the Lord. Father, allow them to look back on the years that you allowed them to spend with their mother. Those great times, Father. Those cherishable moments, Father. We thank you. Father, I speak healing over the family right now. I speak peace over the family right now. I speak joy over the family right now. Father, one thing we know that, Father, you are a healer, Father. Even if you don't heal me right now, Father, I still have faith that you are a healer. Sometimes our healing is not on this side. So we thank you for no more pain. We thank you for no more suffering. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, touch Pastor Bond this morning. Father, empty him and fill him with the Holy Spirit. Father, allow him, Father, to sow into our lives. Father, allow him to change somebody's situation, Father. There's somebody out there seeking change, Father. There's, a, there's somebody out there that's lost that needs this word this morning. So we thank you, Father. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for seven years. Thank you for the great visionary, Dr. Green. Thank you for every man and their family that's on this call. This is our prayer in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Matt. Amen. We're just um, thankful for you, Anthony, for, for just answering the call and being faithful um, for all the brothers, all the administrators that are making this possible. For the last seven years, God has entrusted us with the vision to be able to share and to empower and uplift men with the power of prayer and spiritually enhanced personal development. Because there's one thing to come to the Lord, to, to give you, to ask for forgiveness of sins and to, and to live uh, for Christ. But in the process of living, we have to get better. And when you know better, you do better. And that's why one of the major reasons why this forum and this platform was created to be able to bring spiritually enhanced personal development to men so that we can grow up into everything God has designed and desired for us to be. So we're so excited, so excited about that. Um, this morning, I don't want to belabor this uh, any longer. We've got a young man from uh, Washington, D.C. area, and he is such a, uh, he is such a jewel. He and his wife, uh, Ms. Candace, are, are change agents. They've been change agents uh, ever since they've been, uh, they, they've been around. Uh, Bon, uh, as um, he loves the Lord and he's always made it a point to be able to lift up and, and leverage his relationship with the Lord. Now, one of the, the claims to fame is that he was personally mentored by Dr. Miles Monroe. And he's established a church called Rain Church because the, the deal right now is for, if for change to happen, rain needs to fall down on the earth. And when rain comes down, the seeds and the grass and everything blooms and grows and growth occurs. So change is necessary, but in order for it to happen, it needs to be, be nurtured, it needs to be blessed. So this morning, we're going to be blessed with a, with a good, uh, with a special and powerful word from my friend, and you're a new friend, Von Villafana. Von, are you there? Hold up, let me, let me unmute you. You need to unmute yourself. You got it? 
Good morning, Johnny. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you well. I apologize. I have my, my line muted out. Good morning, gentlemen, from the National Men's Prayer, Prayer Call. Good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me on the call today. I feel really honored and blessed to be here on the call, and um, the Lord is good. Amen. So let's get into it. Um, change is inevitable. We all know this. Um, so today we're going to be talking about change, but the, uh, the point of view we're going to take today is how to manage change. Uh, we see in the world today that there's a lot of things taking place with COVID and, you know, there's just the condition of the world. And one thing we have to master as leaders and as, as, as men, we have to learn how to manage the change that's taking place, not just for ourselves, but for our families as well. So let's give, first give a definition for change. Change is the act or instance of making or becoming different. It's the act to alter or to modify. You know, we don't always like change as men. You know, sometimes we are stuck in our ways um, as men and we don't always like change. But change can be good and change, you know, transforms you from one level to another level. The Bible says, you know, uh, we are changed from glory to glory. Amen. But sometimes change comes in our life unexpectedly and we have to learn how to manage the change that's coming into our life. There are many things in life we may have the opportunity to imagine, but one thing we can always guarantee is that change is inevitable. Change is the only constant that takes place in life. So if we cannot manage change, really, we cannot manage life. Gentlemen, you know, at one time, I know I could speak for myself and a few of you guys on the call, I used to have hair on my head and now I have to learn to manage my life without it, right? That's just how life is. One day you have the hair, next day you don't. One day my clothes fit perfectly, another day don't. You know, I'm now I have to manage the stomach. So that's how life is. You know, the kids are here in the house and then one day they move out and they go to college. And we're always changing and we're always evolving. And how do we manage that change? Helen Keller, you guys know she was the, uh, a famous uh, woman in this country and um, she was blind. But she made a famous statement that says, security is mostly a superstition, okay? Every time you think you're secure, life throws a curveball. Something else happens. We are always changing and always evolving. So she said, security is mostly a superstition. The ability for you to adjust to change is something that every leader needs to accomplish. The only thing that we know that does not change is our heavenly father who is in heaven. James chapter one, verse seven says, every good deed and every perfect gift comes from the father who is above. It comes down from the father of light who doesn't change any more than a shadow as it turns. So just as a shadow stays constant, no matter where you go, no matter which direction the sun hits your body from, the, the shadow still takes on the silhouette of the human body. It says our father is like this. No matter what comes at us, our father never changes. His word never changes. So the one thing you can always put your trust in is the constant who is our father and his word. So because our heavenly father does not change, we know we can always put our trust in him. So the best way to be prepared for change is to expect change. And today we're going to be talking about four ways that we as men can manage change because we know change is coming in the world, in our bank account, in our finances, good or bad. We know change is coming. How do we prepare for change? So here are four ways that we can prepare for change. One, number one is have the right perspective. Is it change or is it really an opportunity? Always see change as an opportunity. One man's change is another man's opportunity. Yes, like I said earlier, you may have no hair on the head anymore, but think about how much money now you're saving on haircuts. Is it change or is it an opportunity? Some of you guys are giving me a thumbs up. I've saved a lot of money over the years since I've lost my hair, okay? Yes, you may not be as young as you used to be, but think about how much wiser you are now and what you can pass on now to the next generation, okay? Yes, you may have, some people on the call may have lost a job with COVID, may have lost a job, but think about now you have the opportunity now to actually start that business that you have been prolonging 
forever. So is it change or is it opportunity? It's all about perspective. It's the lens in which you see life through will determine the vision in which you accomplish it. So what opportunities are you passing on because you're crying over what could have been rather than expecting or looking forward to what can be? Is it change or is it opportunity? So perspective is everything. Perspective changes the way you see life. Number two, how do you manage change? Number two, have a plan B. Always have a plan B. A plan B, some change in life is necessary for growth. You know, we all were young at one time and 15 years old. Imagine if you never grew. What if you stayed 15 years old for your entire life? What would your life be today? So change is necessary. One day we were 15, another day we were 16. Some of us now are in our 30s and 40s and 50s. Change is always constant. When Moses was about to die, uh, he started to train Joshua to succeed him in leadership. Moses was supposed to be the one to lead the children of Israel into the promised land. But because Moses messed up and disappointed the Lord, the Lord had to turn to plan B. And Joshua was plan B. Moses was the one who was supposed to take them in. But Joshua became the one instead. And the Lord actually said that generation will not enter into the promised land, into the blessing of what the Lord had for them because of their disobedience. But even our father always has a plan B. Okay? So question is, if you're running an organization, who will replace you in the organization? What is your, what is your plan B? Moses had Joshua to succeed him. Who is going to replace you if anything were to happen to you in that company, in the business, on that job? Are you training your successor? Always have a plan B. I've always had a plan B in my life and it made the world a difference. So I'm always prepared, or I try to be always prepared. I try to look ahead and see what's coming, even with this financial situation right now in, in, in the world. You know, I've always tried to be prepared financially and put things aside just in preparation for what for the unexpected so a plan b can be life insurance if you have children you want to make sure you have a plan b in place life insurance a small business it can be a home-based business it can be a, a business at the at the mall it can be a traditional franchise i've done all of them been there and done that but you've got to always have a plan b a savings account you got to have investments and as i mentioned earlier a successor always have a successor always be training your replacement leaders raise up leaders leaders always raise up people as their replacement at some point in the future so number two to manage change to manage the unexpected you must have a plan b you must have a backup plan for the unexpected number three mindset mindset is everything carol dweck she is a uh, professor of psychology at Stanford University. He wrote an amazing book that everyone should get. It's called Mindset. And she, made a, she, uh, she drew a comparison between two different types of mindset. She called one a growth mindset and the other one a fixed mindset. A growth mindset is a person who is open to change, a person who is open to evolving and becoming more than they ever thought that they can become. She said the, uh, the joy of life is in the becoming. And a fixed mindset is a person who refused to change, a person who is stuck in their ways, you know, and, and, and they just refuse to evolve. So the joy is in the becoming. It's you becoming more. It's you open to change. It's you preparing for change. It's you expecting change because we know change is inevitable. The only thing we know that does not change is our Father in heaven. He's the only true constant in this world. So we can put our trust in him. So I've learned in life to become uncomfortable, to become comfortable. And it sounds a little cliche, but it's really one of the best mindsets you can have in preparation for change. When you think about the children of Israel, they were stuck in Egypt. And when they were stuck in Egypt, they were suffering. They cried out to the Lord and said, Lord, save us, deliver us from this horrible situation we're in. 
The Lord sent the deliverer, sent Moses, took him out of Egypt, and now they're on their way to the promised land. They know where they're going. They're going to a better place. But because it was hard and difficult just for a few months in the wilderness, that wilderness experience, yes, it may have been the job loss. Yes, it may have been an illness. Yes, it may have been a divorce. But just that period of time where it was difficult, they begin to turn their back on the creator. They begin to they gossip on the creator. They begin to backbite on the creator. They begin to, you know, to just say horrible things about who he is, his nature, his love for them. They just, they just lost all faith because of that short time when they went through a difficult situation, when they went through change and they just didn't know how to handle change. So during their time, rather than praise the Lord in every situation, rather than put their trust in him in every situation, rather than knowing that he will never leave them nor forsake them, they turned their back on him because they didn't know him like Moses knew him. You see, when it was time for them to go up the mountain to meet him, when he came down to introduce himself to them, they refused to go. And Moses and Joshua went up the mountain. So they knew the Lord, Moses and Joshua, different to how the other Israelites knew the Lord. They went up the mountain to meet the Lord when the other Israelites stayed at the bottom and they refused to go meet the Lord and they were scared of him. And they actually made idols from the very thing that he created. They idolized it rather than going to the one who created all things. They began to worship the creation. So their heart was totally corrupted. The Lord loved them and the Lord was trying to draw them close to him. But they, their heart was for the creation more than the creator. Change is inevitable, but how we manage change will determine how far we get in life and what we are willing, what we actually achieve in life and where we're willing to go and how quickly we get there. And you can see change caused the children of Israel, of Israel to not enter into their blessing because they didn't know how to manage change. They took change, the, the, the situation they were in, they became offended by change rather than seeing the change as a blessing to get them ready for the next journey in life. So number three, so number two, again, number three, again, is mindset. It's how you see the world, the mindset you have. If the children of Israel had a different mindset going into the wilderness and coming out of the wilderness into the promised land, they would have inherited their blessing. The question is, is your mindset holding you back from entering into your blessing? Is the change that you're experiencing in your life in the world today, are you really understanding the Lord is transitioning you into a blessing rather than you're seeing it as an inconvenience? Change is inevitable. And how we manage change determines how quickly we get to that blessing. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might be able to prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of the Lord. So proving what is good and proving what is acceptable to Jehovah is determined by your mindset, is determined by the renewing of your mind, is determined by what goes in and the perspective in which you see life through. Harriet Tubman made a famous statement that says, I freed a thousand slaves, but I could have freed a thousand more if they only knew that they were slaves. If the Israelites only knew that they were really slaves, there will be no desire to go back to Egypt. Change is inevitable, but we can manage change. Last one, number four, is communication. Communication is important when there is change. There are times when people are intention, unintentionally hurt with the changes either you made or the change that is placed upon you. And there is sometimes collateral damage because of change. There are a lot of people who lost their jobs and a lot of people who lost their homes because of the situation in the world today. So communication is the, is the key to manage the fallout of change. The collateral damage, at, the collateral damage that happens with change. Maybe the job requires you now to work longer hours. Maybe there are less employees on the job. And now the people who are there have to work longer hours. Maybe you have now to work two jobs. 
Maybe you got to start that business because you don't have the job anymore. You got to learn to manage your change. But when the change comes, communication between your spouse, communication between the children, communication between your loved ones, that is what's imperative. That is what's most important, that you maintain the communication between yourself and the ones you love. Good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. Good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it already has taken place. And you know, men, sometimes we have an issue. We don't always communicate like we should. Sometimes your wife might say, man, you know, let's talk. And you know, when you hear those words, and you cringe sometimes. Those are not the magic words you want to hear. Let's talk. But the illusion of communicating when you really haven't communicated is the problem. So never assume after you have communicated, after you have communicated, never assume, always communicate again with your spouse and with your loved one and with your loved ones. So communicate with your family, but most of all, communicate with your father in heaven. Because at the end of the day, there is no greater way to manage change than prayer. Prayer is the greatest form of communication that there is. Prayer is the greatest form of managing change because all great men in the Bible, all great men in scripture knew how to fall on their knees and communicate with their father in heaven whenever life became difficult or challenging or whenever they lost their way. They knew one thing, and you can always look at some of the greatest leaders in scripture, especially men like David and Moses. They knew how to fall on their face and call on the one who created all things. They always communicated with their father. And even Jesus, the Bible said, he would leave his disciples and he would go away to a quiet place. He would go away into the mountain. He would get up late, early in the morning before, the, the scripture says, before anyone else was awake or the sun rose. And he would always communicate with the one who created all things. He communicated with his father. The most powerful asset you have to manage change in your life is communication with the one who made you, and that is prayer. The most powerful weapon, sometimes the, more, the most underestimated weapon we have is prayer. Amen. And you know, there's a great example of prayer in the scriptures in Revelations. You see uh, the angel took the prayer and he went, the scripture says he went before the throne room and he offered the prayers of the saints to the father. And that is what happens to you when you pray. The angels take your prayer and they offer the prayers as incense, as an offering before the throne room of the father. The scripture says about Cornelius, it says he gave so much and he prayed so hard that the Lord sent an angel. He said, the scripture says, Cornelius, your prayer and your giving has come before the Father as a memorial. That's how awesome prayer is. Prayer can move mountains. Prayer can get your Father to do things for you that he may not do for anyone else. But because you prayed, he will do it for you. You see, Joshua was able to cause the sun and the moon to stand still because he prayed. Amen? Because he prayed. What can you move? What are you able to move if you pray? The Bible says if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can speak to the mountain. You can speak to that situation. You can speak to your life. You can speak to every obstacle in your way. And you can say, be moved and be cast into the sea. Hallelujah. So the Lord is good. I want to thank you, brothers, for allowing me just to share with you today, just to share my heart about managing change, because change is coming. But in Jesus' name and in, in his victory, we're able to manage change and be successful leaders, not just for ourselves, but for this, for, for this generation and the one that's coming. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen, Pastor Vaughn. Thank you. Um, how to manage change, gentlemen. Pastor Vaughn, you did an amazing job, brother. I just want you to know that I really was blessed by the, the word and then those four steps. It was kind of interesting, too, because um, I was really trying to uh, navigate and see how you were going to be able to uh, really incite us to do that. And one of the things you said is that uh, how you manage change is 
um, determines how far you, you get in life, right? Sure. And one of the other things I thought about is how we manage change also determines how we experience life as well. Yeah. You know, because without that management and things are happening to us, we can either go from a very depressed space and, you know, gloom outlook because things are changing. But because if we um, implement your, your four steps, we could experience it, be prepared for it, and really uh, maximize the experience. It's all the difference of what the ride feels like, you know, that we can sit back and enjoy and rest in God, understanding that we, you know, we've implemented these tools. And it's all about not only how we manage it, how far we get, but how we experience it as well seeing that we're not going uh you know slow walking and sad talking but we're celebrating life and so that was a big big step a big big point for me so i want to thank you for that and so again you got to have the right perspective you got to have the right have a plan b you have to have the right mindset and we have to communicate effectively so thank you pastor vaughn amazing so gentlemen with those four steps we get ready to move into the rest of the week as we get ready to close out the rest of the year quite honestly we're getting ready and we're in a space where you know the nation is telling us not to have any thanksgiving celebrations that we should hone it down and unless we embrace these changes unless we operate in leadership you know it determines uh the outlook that people in our sphere of influence will have about how we even see god at the end of the day so we got to make sure that we, we are able to uh, be light and inspiration, be salt into this world, to make sure that they really see how good and glorious our God is. And we won't let the, just the circumstances even pull down the glory of God. You know, we're always lifting it up because we do have the right perspective. So let's go before God and uh, go strong into this week. We step in real strong as a band of brothers with a united uh, front about how our perspective is and how we are pliable enough to change and willing uh actually so again amazing job pastor uh heavenly father we come before you and we thank you for this dynamic word we thank you for this dynamic uh son of yours father who has reminded us the power of change and what we need to do uh to be equipped to handle it and to have the right state of mind as we go through it, to be the right leaders, to have a succession plan. We thank you for all of that, Father. We take that rhema word and we wanna make sure that we're not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word as well, Father. Making sure that we step up and diligently do all that you've required us to do. To, to make sure that we change to a point to where we are participating in the process of evolving to look like our big brother, Jesus Christ. Father, so, um, you have your, your sons here, Father, ready and willing uh, to go to the next level, Father, and have a transformational experience so that we can be everything that you've called us to be. We love you, we honor you, and now we live for you. In your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Great word. Great, great way to start. Absolute pleasure, Pastor. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, let's go ahead and change. Have a great day, gentlemen. Say again. Great job, Pastor. I just say have a great day, gentlemen. All right. Yeah. See y'all right, on Thursday. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Brothers, be safe.